Miles, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the panel show. It's good to be here. And uh, my crew is <laughs> retarded. <laughs> um, welcome to the panel show. I'm I'm so inspired to meet you, um, to know your story, um, and I'm hoping that you will unpack it for everyone to learn because the little glimpses of it I've seen, my understanding of human beings and their achievements, I know there are so many thick layers in between. Yeah. But I guess for me, I'll start with my entry point. I'm driving with my partner in Alex a couple of weeks ago, and I see this really dope container. At the time, look, and I made a video because I saw Gual SA. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that there was Gwali SA. Yes. And then when I posted it and people said it, I was like, yeah. Gualisa, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I, I walk past this, or drive, I drive past this yellow container, Gualisa. I'm like, no, man, this is dope. And I literally reverse back and I want to look at it. But after looking at it, I'm like, I want to capture this because this is inspiring. And I've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs that have told me stories about my grandmother used to sell and call me she yes. and I'm like someone has actually formalized this and it looks so dope I go in there and say, no mom I'm like mama can I take a video she refers me to her daughter I don't put it out to social media I'm like yes I just wanna yeah. she's like sure so I I take a video I post it up I think it trended on on TikTok yes I posted on my Instagram you reposted it because yeah. I didn't know who'd founded it I was just like hey old lady's doing the most yes someone mentioned something about SAP etc and I found you and I went on your page. I was like, no, this is actually someone that's really dope. Thank you, man. So shout out to you. Shout out to Kualisa. And I'm hoping along the journey of your story, you will speak about that as well. I mean, I think shout out to you for stopping and 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 blowing us up. Thank you, like sure. sincerely. And uh, the old mama that you, you met, um, she's actually a community member. Um, yeah. They run a community-based organization. And they've been doing it for 20 years, feeding kids in that community, like forever. Unsung heroes, they just do it. Like, mm -hmm. and they just kept on doing. How I got to meet them was during lockdown, you know, when the president said level five. Sure. I'm like an entrepreneur. When someone says sit, I go out. I got sure. in my car, I drove, and Alex You're was breaking no regulations, ah, Baba. I, I certified myself as an essential <laughs> service. <laughs> it's like, and I went, and you realize, like, quickly that people are now water, right? Yeah. And and they were busy. So I called up some of our entrepreneurs. We have stunning kitchens. Everybody rolled up their sleeves. We started cooking. Mm. You know, the first day we think we did 300 meals Jeez. and we kept on going and we just found these community-based organizations. And once you start getting there and working with the community, then you meet other role players. So I made an organization called SA Harvest and I sit on their board. Um, Giron just invited me, said, look, I see what you're doing. We've got vehicles and we've got distribution. You can just focus on the food. We'll take it. And long story long, um, as of three months ago, we've done 3 million meals. Crazy. Something I didn't set out to do. Like they invited you on the board. Yeah. Uh, just to, from the work you were doing. Yeah. We were like, and then we just, we started a band and we just screwed this thing that was. But you realize that's insane, right? Our understanding of how people get on boards is not be of service. Yeah. People will true. see you and you will get to wherever maybe you want to be. Or maybe if you, yeah. even if you don't want to be, but that'll make your service easier. And, and that's literally been my journey is that in fact my mom puts it best she says if you're stuck on the side of the road get out of your own car and start pushing because yeah. you'll be surprised to see how many people will stop to push because you're you. pushing yeah who wants to push you and your car yeah you know people push something that's in motion so it's easier for people to support when they see that you're doing something and it doesn't have to be monumental like small mm -hmm. and that's how it started 300 meals you know three million three million i remember doing charity work in alex I think before COVID, Umartin Bigim Shongo, rugby player, I think he works in agriculture. There was a lady in Alex, Utepi. Uh, she's an accountant and she's also a referee in rugby. Mm. There's Africa Tikun yeah. in Alex. And we yeah. did a huge soup kitchen and gave away groceries and blankets. And I was like, and Futi Alex is such a weird township because townships have a model. Yeah. And Alex is Alex is not unique. part of that yeah, model. It's, yeah some other yeah how do you get involved just with alex besides the lockdown were you just driving around where's where's home how so, do you get into just doing community work 
yeah and and i'm an entrepreneur so i'm not a social bunny hugger anything sure. like and in fact that's how to Alisa came about because it bugged me because once you start doing the charity stuff so you feed 10 people today there's 15 tomorrow yeah i'm like guy come on like it, it's it's redundant you and know it's you not feel sustainable. like it's, it's totally not sustainable so I was thinking there must be a charity model as opposed to charity where people are invested in their own dignity. Please say that again. Charity. Yeah. Just, Sharing. Yeah. It's just, versus charity. Yeah. Beautiful. So share as in having an equity in whatever you're doing. So because then you stop the cycle of um, cap in hand and begging. Yeah. Because the thing people don't tell you is that once you are in charity, it's layers of begging. So yeah. we go beg for corporates and retailers to give us the excess food. That's what we do with SA Harvest. We go to big retailers like Pick and Pay, ShopRite, and say, give us your sell-by date food. Because yeah. there's nothing wrong with that food. They just have to move it from the shelves because sure. there's another truck bringing more food. Fair right? enough. So it's like literally a time issue. Yeah. So we take that food um, and then we give it to those community-based organizations. And But you're essentially begging yourself. Mm. So there's tears of begging. Sure. Like ah, oh, bro, I didn't sign up for this, you know, mm. and and to what end? When does it stop? Mm. So when I saw Mama Pule doing this and doing it out of her own um, kindness of her heart, serving this community, and she's been doing it for years. Her mom did it. I was like, there must be a model where we can break the cycle of mm. begging and also give the end customer dignity. Mm. Because how it used to happen back in the day, like you were saying, Ekomi, she's like, good mama would send you next door. Sure. The problem is that now, next door, I don't have a either, mm. right? Mm. So no one talks about that. It's yeah. like, you know? So then it automatically forces somebody to go into a charity mindset because you don't have any resources to by just even the bare minimum, sure. right? Where you could have borrowed, sure. right? So there's no dignity in that. Yeah. And then once you get into that cycle, you just continue. So just to, to wrap that up, what I then realized is that also a lot of people in the townships are not poor. They're just poorly paid. So they have a cash flow issue. So if you cut grass or you're a cobbler, you, you're making ends meet. Mm. Food is designed in such a way that the pack sizes marginalize you out of being able to pay for them because they come in the fixed yeah. size and price point. Yeah. But I'm a systems engineer. So if you remove the things that are stupid, like really, like yeah. if you remove that and you allow somebody to buy for the amount of money they have, all of a sudden the problem systemically goes away. That's crazy. I'm just thinking, you're talking about how the, the way food is packaged, it's almost, this is for a month. Yes. And you may not have money for a month, but you may have been paid for the day, for the day or for three days. Yes. And you're saying people in townships are not poor. They're just poorly, they paid. poorly paid. Yeah. Which special. would mean they maybe don't get a salary for the month. They might get money for the two days, yes. but they can't afford the big pack. Yes. And that's where you saw a gap as a systems engineer. Yeah. And I'll throw you one back that will mm. blow your mind or it certainly did mine because it wasn't my lived experience until sure. you are in there and you own the problem as yours. And uh, I guess that's the difference between empathy and sympathy. Empathy is became my problem. It's like, yeah. this is a stupid problem, right? You realize, oh, damn it. And I know this subconsciously because we all do. Food is cheaper in bulk. Everybody yes. knows that. You buy bulk pricing. It's like it's obvious, yes. right? The difference is bulk pricing assumes you've got a lot of money to buy the bulk. Yes. Right? So food is actually, let me make you an empirical example. Um, a 20 kilogram bag of maize meal. Mm. 20 kilogram works out to 7 rand 50 a kilogram okay. right so you times it by the 20 right so it works out to be that but a half a kilogram bag so a small one mm. a small pack sizes that maybe you can afford because you you made some money that day that one works out to be twice as expensive it's 13 rand 50 mm. so food is double the smaller the pack size yeah but like then you're marginalizing the person who really needs the sm small size. 100%. So it's so I was like, how do we flip that around? How sure. do I pass on the discount for bulk for someone who's buying yeah. smaller size? And then there's obviously the upside is that you remove packaging so there's less costs. Mm. So now I can actually pass on that discount. And and I, I, it's this your was, interview, this was, this I can call you. On. No, it's not an interview. We're having a <laughs> chat, please. Yeah. Uh, what was my question? This this inspired you to come up with this idea and you did it on your own? 
Yeah, I mean, um, but like I have a team, so sure. But I'm just saying the conceptualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it's not rocket science. It's like we've been doing it. Yeah. And I find the best ideas are the ones that are like just staring you in the face, but people can't see because I think no one teaches you the entrepreneurial mindset, like that everything is an opportunity, sure. particularly when things are going sideways. It's like breathe, like where's an angle here, mm. right? And um, I don't know why. But I suppose it's like athletes. Some people are just talented. They can sure. run faster. And, and uh, But you need a coach to to take you to the next level. Mm. I think it's a, it's a similar thing. Having the vision to see opportunity where others maybe don't. Yeah, and there's plenty of them. Two things, the taxi industry and Grameen Bank. Yeah. You spoke about dignity and small communities. And I, I remember there was a business I founded years ago, which eventually collapsed. It was inspired by, because I read, and then they fired me by Yanni Muton who founded PSG, mm. huge investment company. Mm -hmm. One of the stories that he references is a story of Grameen Bank. I think it might be in Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, Professor Mohammed Yunus. Mm. And he spoke about, you speak about food, you speak about money. Yes. And I think he ended up winning a Nobel Prize for Grameen Bank because mm. he was finding many groups of, especially oh mama that work yes. with their hands. I said, oh mama, Dicey played or mama that do hair, et cetera. And he was like, these guys can't access finance. Mm. They don't have the paperwork. They don't have the compliance. But there's this model, which in South Africa, we call it stock failure. Yeah. This model of saying, look, give these women, let's call it a thousand rand, 5,000. I think Richard Branson may have experimented with it at some point. And then they can pay you back interest, but you incentivize them. As you pay back, you can access more. Yeah. And I think when I read the book, I mean, bank, I don't want to lie, but billions of dollars mm. in terms of money that given out and almost everyone had paid. Their bad debts book was very low. Yeah. Yanni Muton credits that as what inspired Capitec, et cetera. But it, there's a mislink, misalignment. When you spoke about dignity, one of the things Muhammad Yunus was emphasizing was it gives these people dignity. We have our money. We can go buy tools. We can buy our own things. We mm. don't have to beg. We don't have to. And we can grow and make this money together as a community, which I think was pretty, and you hold each other accountable, accountable the yeah. charity. Yeah. And it's not charity. Yeah. It's not, here's free money. Yeah. It's you need to work. earn this. Yeah. And if you do, we then, will give you more. Yeah. And I remember at some point in my head, I was like, if government said, here's a grant, of which I hate grants, by the way, because it distorts the mind to be able to solve problems. Here's 200 rand. After we give you this 200, clean your house, get chickens, plant a spinach garden. We will come and review. We'll send agents. Mm. And as you do more, we'll give you more money. Mm. Because now, and then once you're self-sustaining, we will maybe help you go to market or whatever the case may be. That's the first story I wanted to say. And I, I don't think stock fails in this country are still being done right. Mm -hmm. I know the banks want to commercialize. They've tried. I know some people are coming up with apps and other things, but I don't think we've hit the core the way you're doing with Equalisa to say, if you're a group of five people, I think government tried it with co-ops, mm. but they mm. also didn't fully explain what the co-op is a fancy stock fell and let the people do it organically. Right. And say, look, get the cruncher 5,000, do some work, we'll give you more, we'll give you more. Mm. And that's the first story with dignity. The second one is the taxi industry. And I'm hoping you'll speak to us about what you mentioned about being a systems engineer and hopefully about where you come from as well, Miles. Um, I have always thought had taxis mm. and at some point we go to X model C private schools we're going to go and study accounting and can we not be the children to come back home and formalize the taxi industry mm. we've had a Jewish company now in transaction capital and SA taxi mm. do the finance and the insurance and in my head I'm like but where are the children and grandchildren of these people mm. um, you've gone and done that and this is where I'm hoping you'll speak to us about engineering and where you come from. Right. I'm imagining a story of a young boy being like my mom or my grandma used to have this thing where she'd Anez Avanti cooking oil, ne flour, and mm. rice and impupu for a little bit of money, itiki or ipen, whatever people had. And as I grew older and as I studied with Imalia Koko or Imalia Mama at Dicey Plate, mm. I then traveled the world and I saw what I could formalize my mom's little food truck. We I saw you posted. I saw you posted Uvuyo. Story <laughs> of Uvuyo. Such a big, big, big dreamer. dreamer. Yeah. And you go and you become that. And it's a challenge. And I've said it's a challenge for us. 
Our parents did whatever they could to send us there, but have we ever gone back home to upscale and formalize and add technology and innovation to what they've done? The taxi industry kids have failed. Fuel stations, service workshops, financing, stupid idea, stupid idea. In the taxi at the front, glue and a calculator. <laughs> and you just stick a calculator there so people Good just punch. Change. Come on, man. Sorry, so your your background as a Miles Berger. I mean, I think the thing is engineering. You've said so much there. Like I wish we you know we Kulega, please please yeah, speak. I'll try and shut up. No, no, because I think there's so many like nuggets that I'm passionate about in, in each of those things. Um you know, the one thing though I do the old I get, I've come to realize that like we really need to be nicer to ourselves. Sure. Right? Like I heard it saying, and I was like, and from a young kid, was it treat yourself like the person, like the way you would treat someone you love. Sure. And I think as South Africans, because it's rough. I mean, it is what it is, right? We're very quick to be hard, hard on ourselves mm. and forget where we come from. And I'm not saying it like in the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but... But things do take time. Yeah. And I've traveled the world and I can tell you there's problems. Sure. And that's one other thing I would wish on South Africans is exposure, is travel. People need to travel. People need to travel. It changes your perception. Like Even within the country. Dude, like mm. get out of your own province because then you... And that's why like when you see immigration and all of that, in fact, we should be exporting our own youth. If like I had means and the power, if you turn 19... Like I would pay for people's gap years or as, and say, yeah, take $10,000, whatever, mm. go and go be someone else's problem. Go drive an Uber in someone else's country. It does two things. One, it takes you out of your comfort zone, right? And when you're uncomfortable somewhere, you become resourceful, yeah. right? So, and then you set up roots there potentially, but it makes it easy for the second guy we, we're sending next year because yeah. <laughs> now there's a community. I can tell you, that's what every community in the world does. Yeah. I've said in, in the back of so many Ubers, never once been driven by a South African, mm. anywhere in the world. Sure. But I can tell you, every other nationality is doing There's just that. There's been an Uber driver there. Shout out to Israel, by the way, because I think they have a fund of Israeli kids, Jewish kids, anywhere around the world. They yeah. get, I think, a free trip to Israel yeah. when they're young. And, that's, uh, and I think... That changes our perception. And mm. then I think we're coming back to the point of that we are being hard on ourselves. Some of those things will just take time. You get so hurtful and the system is called an um, Overton window. Like things are like a pendulum. They'll go to extreme mm. and then they will go to the extreme opposite to try and course correct, but they almost always take the best of the two. Sure. What's it called? Um, uh, Overton window. Overton window. window. Yeah. Okay. It's like even morals, right? Like morals go, or some in the 1800s, you could marry at 16. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's like, you know. Steamed inappropriate. It's steamed inappropriate. But then it settles to what the then society believes should be normal. Sure. Yeah. No, please keep going. You said there were nuggets. I want to know about systems engineering and your upbringing. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, so... Grew up in Soweto, born and bred. Where um, in Soweto? A deep glue expensive, as Ooh. my mom would say. Um, Your parents were well off. <laughs> my mom, uh, raised by a single mom, amazing woman. Shout out to your mom. Yeah, no. What did she do? Um, she worked in research um, and like worked the, the whole gambit until she owned her own business, which I think she would have owned and started younger if she didn't have two boys to raise by herself which is something like I feel bad about. I wish she, she had started it earlier, yeah. you know, but time. A lot of know? our parents and especially our mothers were kept out of opportunities and things that would have fully ignited their, their talents. 100%. We'd be different play. In fact, that's the other point you mentioned about women um, uh, earlier. To me, like Uma Mapule and Alex, for example, like I found that women are literally carrying this country. Yeah. Like, like on their heads, but on their backs, they've got the kids. They mm -hmm. literally, if you beg it, takes it mind rule, like almost always, it's 70% women. Yeah. But guys, we are not showing up. Sure. Like proper. And I mean, I, and like the classic story my mom gave me that still seems relevant now, if not more. She says, in like in the 70s or late 70s, she was working in downtown Joburg. And, um, 
lunchtime, she just thought, let me rush downstairs and buy a maquinha on the pavement. Mm. She gets downstairs. Hey, puma. There's this uh, cop with the, you know, the stick that used to walk mm, around baton. with, with the baton. There and, might be another name for it. Baton. Yeah, but yeah. And and the guy says... Donkey Piri. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the guy says, um, where's your pass? She says, no, I left it upstairs. I just literally came down type of thing. Mm. says, no. Go and, back. Uh, no, puts her in a quela quela. How? Yeah, right there. As she walks in in the quela quela, there's like, I don't know, eight or nine other men sitting there. Mm. And she, as she's about to sit down, she realizes, but the door is open. And the same cop is down the block now, like sure. looking for more people to, to put it in the back of. But the door is open. Sure. She says, Mara, why don't we just, why don't we leave? Yeah. Oh, my do- oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. So she stands up and leaves, goes upstairs, and she looks down, and guess what? They're still sitting there. Mm. And the, the part that bothers me about the story, and listen, I've seen it time and time again, is the fact that even when you've shown people an example, yeah. because you, one thing if she said, as Pumeni and Nanga Pumi, sure. and right, okay, but she left, and nothing she happened to it. She possible. showed them, and they still stayed. It's mental, it's mental, not colonization, but yeah, it's when your mind is captured and contained yeah, and imprisoned. Contained. <laughs> I see, I mental imprisonment, yeah. maybe is the term I was looking for. Yeah. So, so I was raised by that woman. Shout out to your mom. Two boys yeah. at DK. Yeah. I saw it. Well, we started off in Fuller North, which was like proper interesting. I remember because I used to catch a train to school yeah. every day. By myself. I think I started catching it at like six years old. Crazy. The one time uh, I was playing in the field at the bottom and I forgot. <laughs> and then I had to go to a uh, station by myself. And I don't know if the train hasn't changed. It's still like, mm. it's full, you know? And yeah. I don't know what my stop is. I mean, like I'm six years old and I got on, right? Look, you know, times were different. Like kids would still make it home i i think if it had happened today i probably yeah wouldn't Mm. have fluk got off at the right station again just luck there there was i don't know yeah so jeez shout out to you and it's it's crazy how life has changed yeah i still see kids in the jobic cbd very young probably eight seven younger walking in the streets crossing robots going into some school that's in a building and then I think of all the, especially guys that I've met, especially at a tertiary level, like at UJ Vitz, who are petrified of the CBD. Yeah. And I'm like, I see kids crossing the roads on their own. Yeah. But how things have changed, because it wasn't a problem for some of us young as we were to go home. Single yes. mom, no nanny, no whatever. It was a community that raised you. Yeah. And that's why when I saw Oboma Mapule doing what they were doing, it just resonated with me. It was like... Those are the pe- people, that's something that's in motion that I, I can get behind. Mm-hmm. I only have to apply myself. So to your point about being a systems engineer. So I went to VITS. Uh, my undergrad was at VITS. Um, my master's actually was also at VITS. And I always just appreciated um, learning. Um, mm-hmm. And again, I think it's my mother's fault because I remember even in my bedroom, my the headboard of sure. my bed was books. The headboard was made out of books. She used to read the training because she had nothing. That's the only way to escape. So I grew up with books all over the place. To a sure. point that my son now is like an avid reader. My son reads like books this big yeah. and, and at a very young age. Um, and I, Because I think you can break the cycles mm. or you can create new cycles, sure. right? So And you can see it. So that's why I say we need to be kind on ourselves. It's, mm. it's a journey and it's a hard journey. But it doesn't help to shoot ourselves down either. Sure. It, it's not going to move us faster forward. Sure. You know, and in and, and the points about government and all of that, I think like anything, you know, I've, I've seen um, and worked with some ministers and I was like, oh, I don't want that job. Because yeah, no, bro. Think about it logically. Mm. Think about if you were a terrible, terrible administrator, minister, whatever. Sure. You're bad. Like things are so bad now in terms of things that need to be fixed and done mm-hmm. that even if you bad, the volume of work you need to do. Yeah. Do you, do you get my point? I Is that it, it, it's it's Andre Tereta coming into ESCOM? 
well, we, we can argue about his tenure, <laughs> but he came into a, a yeah, things a are utility online. company that was already seeing flames. So my point is, I think, again, if you don't have visibility, you will have a point of view, mm. right? And rightfully so. You see what you see. It's your lived experience. If a uh, man's our pull me, it's a direct impact on you, sure. right? But I think context also matters. I think we don't often see the whole picture. Mm. And I've come to realize that often it's not the problem that's the problem. And I've seen this with even with Iqbalisa. Often it's not the problem that's the problem. It's the things around the problem that are the actual problem. Okay. So you try to fix one thing and you realize, damn it, it's actually, this is actually not the problem. Yeah. It's all this other stuff that uh, represents in this final thing that I, I'm trying to fix. Sure. Yeah. No, I hear you. Um, what would make you study engineering? Uh, and, and if you had a good schooling experience, if you had a good schooling experience, please can you give a shout out to your primary school and high school as well before you yeah. blow the horn on fits. Yeah, man. Um, I think three quarters of success is luck. Okay. And I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how you can make that scientific, right? Like, sure. Because I look at restaurants, you find five restaurants, but the one is pumping. Like, what is it? Yeah. Right? So it's easy just to apportion it to luck, like a random sure. act, right? But there must be things. There must be something. Th something, right? When you have a curious mind and an entrepreneurial and mind, it bothers you, me. Do, you do want to figure that but, out. Yeah. So luck um, played a huge role in my existence. So yeah. my, um, my mom was working for this advertising agency. And um, one day at the printer, random, she's at, like getting printouts for, she's a clerk or whatever. Mm. And the one guy, executive in the company says, ah, oh, Beatrice, um, you've got two boys, ne? Yeah. Says, yeah, the one is older, one is at school. And says, the one at school, is he doing well at school? Mm. Says, yeah, he's okay. And, um, and the guy randomly just says, well, you know what? If you find him a school, like a multiracial school, we'll pay for it. Brilliant. My life, that moment changed. Yo, she comes home to tell me this. Yo, I was like, hey, nee. I'm in a township school. I'm in standard two. They sure. want to take me two years back because obviously I don't speak a word of English. I remember my first day at school, bruh. Like, after I fought her and I lost that fight. But first day at school, I'm surrounded by all these white kids. Mm. I don't know a single word of English. I had to watch all these other kids do so that I know what to do. Sure. I did that for like a year. So she would wake me up every morning so we can do spelling like at four o'clock. And, and now my school is in Bedford View. So I have to watch at five so because it's an hour and a half drive with traffic. Mm. It was like, and then you see these white kids who live across the road and they walk just five minutes before the bell goes. Like that stuff is traumatic. It I is, still remember it today. It right? Is. And... And then I would have to wake up, long story long, by the end of that year, they used to give out this little trophy. I remember that. They used to give out <laughs> this, this trophy for essay. The person who writes the best essay every week, every yeah. Monday, will get the trophy. The whole year, man, I wrote and wrote the damn thing, didn't get nothing. Mm. Last day of the year, the teacher says, um, the person who gets this trophy at the, uh, for, at the end of the year gets to keep it. Mm. Uh, I'm not even concentrating. Sure. I, I hated that trophy to yeah. be at that point. And they call me up and I, I, I'd gotten, I was the most improved student. Sure. And, and I think it wasn't even brains there. It was just brute force. Yeah. It was my mother's brute force. You will do it. And I did it. It was a teacher. I, it was just brute force. Um, what was the name of the school? St. Benedict's. Uh, it's Cesar Nani in, in... Cesar Nani. Yeah. And um, then you went to St. Benedict's Saint Be in... Bedford View. I saw St. Benedict's in the news. They were celebrating their results because I think they had brilliant results 2022. Yeah, no, there's a machine at school. Uh. Yeah, and like, I mean, to tell you, like, like that my first teacher, like the uh, English teacher or my class teacher, Mrs. McKinnon, I actually mm -hmm. went to see her and thank her because we, back in the day, you couldn't take, the school was small, so we didn't have a really good library. Um, okay. And to write those stories every week, we needed a library. Yeah. So we'd go to the Bedford View Library. Yeah. So we'd go there and Baspambisana, like Nizanda, sure. all the way there. And then, and we'd all find the books. And I didn't realize it until later. But see, every time I went to the counter, the lady would not give me the book. 
right? Because I wasn't allowed to, black kids. I was the only black kid in the school, okay. right? So black people weren't allowed to take out the library books at the public library. Hectic. But she she hid that from me. She would just take it under her, mm. and on our way back in the line, she would give it to me. Miss McKinnon. Mrs. McKinnon. Yeah. Mrs. McKinnon. Shout out to her. Yeah. Shout out to your mom for the brute force. Yeah. <laughs> and she's actually making me think. I I didn't ask if you had any uh, memory or relationship with your dad. Uh, no, biological, I didn't bother. Sure. Yeah, statistic. Do you know him? Um, yeah, do you know his family? Meet. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> like, think typical black and then sure. insert, yeah, yeah. It's like... No relationship, no. And you have, you've had no desire to... I didn't until I had my own son. Okay. And well, he was dead by then. But the point is, I didn't know what I missed out because... My mom was omnipresent. She was yeah. like, and that was my lived experience. So I only had one version and bloody happy with it. Yeah. But now I have to figure out how to be a dad to my own kid, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's no manual on that. Sure. One, two, you realize small things that I then missed out on because I'm now a dad yeah. to someone else. It's like, damn, like stupid things. Like, um, you're like, helping fix something mm-hmm. like i never had that like it was fix it and that's maybe sure. why the systems engineer thing because i would rip out the telephone book at home you remember this <laughs> and, put the, and rip out the phone and put that i made the first phone book literally jeez that's crazy yeah so i had to keep myself busy by myself whereas yeah. i think it's underrated the role that dads can play sure yeah but shout out to your mom great time at saint benedict yeah well, no, not necessarily great time. It was bloody hard in terms of like boys schools are mm. like not, yeah. Yes, boys schools are quite rough. They're rough, yeah. You're they're... also reminding me of Wusi Amtanda Kolisi, the captain of the Springboks, because yeah. he tells a story of when he got taken into Grey High School in Port Elizabeth, the Kabecha, and how he struggled with English and he'd run away and hide. And he credits this guy, I just don't know his name, mm. who I think during break would help him with his English until he started getting more Good fluent it. yeah no so. it was rough i mean um but amazing education mm. it's uh then i went to vets um subsequently which i then worked at microsoft dude i'm full of stories but like you can tell Please. me to shut up like Look, seriously uh, if if we don't cover everything i would like yeah you can i'd like you to please come back yeah and, and a pleasure so please take your time don't okay i feel, I feel like you know um don't rush to get to any destination just Take it easy. If you want to speak about Cizanani. Yeah. Cizanani. Yeah. If you want to speak about St. Benedict's. Yeah. Whatever. So, so you studied s- systems engineering. Yeah. In fact, I studied accounting. Okay. Um, the first year or so. Ironically, that was paid for by ESCOM. Okay. No, actually, my systems engineering was paid for by ESCOM. My accounting degree was paid for by KPMG. Um, you were a good student. Brilliant student. I know. I was a hard worker. Ah, that's a form of humility. No, no, no. I'm this, not in, smart. I just no, no. no in, in this case is really true. Because <laughs> remember, it's a, for, it's a form of humility. No, all I, I, there I, are I, many kids who work hard. There are many kids who are diligent, but unfortunately, they don't crack it. I think my kid is a smart kid. Okay. Uh, like I have a philosophy that in life, if you want to break the cycle, choose your parents wisely. Failing which, choose your children's parents wisely. Boom. So I make sure, but at least from genetically, sure. <laughs> you'll be sorted, right? Sure. Um, Shout out to his mom. <laughs> so for me, um, uh, the accounting KPMG. Yeah. So that was brute force <coughs> stuff that I had learned. Sure. So I just know how to st- stomach things and and just show up. Sure. Right. And just show up and just keep showing up. And sure. that's all I did there. And um, but then it was the height of the dot coms, and I was like, no, I don't, why am I want to count other people's money when I can be participant yes, in man. the come on money? I was like, I I changed, and um, but when I exited, then I went to pay off my bursary at ESCOM. Mm-hmm. Um, we we used to keep the lights on then, <laughs> um, and what was interesting there was that I worked for like. Just under a year, but one day again, my mother came p- to pick me up um, mm. from work. Um, Megawatt Park is in Sunning Hill, and Microsoft's first office was in Sunning Hill. Sure. So we drive past it. And I said to her, You know, that's actually where I would like to work one day. Mm. 
And she says, why are you not, work, why, why are you not working there now? Mm. And I was like, hey. You know, I was stumped. Like, lady. You know, because it was so out of reach in yeah. my mind. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like trying to put it in context. It's like trying to get into Google or Apple yeah. now. Yeah. Right? I'm first year, just got out. Sure. You know? Oh, on Monday, I rock up at the office at Megawatt Park. They used to have cubicles. Mm. I go to Microsoft's um, um, HR career web thingy. Mm. I send in my CV, which is like literally a page, I sure. think. Right? Um, no response. Mm. Second day, no response. I send in another one. Third day, I send in no response. Fourth day, I send in. Like I told you, I just brute force. Brute force, I, I, Baba. I just show up. <sighs> At day number five, I'm thinking this is redundant. There must be a smarter way to do this. Mm. I'm a systems engineer. I write a little bit of AV script so that every morning when I get to my office at Megawatt Park, when I open my laptop, it automatically sends. Send. It does so for the next 17 days. VBS script. Uh, yeah, v uh, Visual Basic then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's coding. Yeah. That's a, I wanted to say before you carry on, I, I almost, so I did accounting. Yeah. I was un under Ernst & Young. Shout out to the firms for paying for us. Yeah, thank you. In my first, second year, because we had to do computer science and information systems, I almost changed. Almost, because I, I got good marks. I enjoyed it. Tech was buzzing. But I was like, no, I'm actually just here to get my degree and get out. Yeah. I half regret it. Yeah, I think I it would have been a really great deviation. Yeah. VBS script, which yeah. is a code so that it yeah, sends. Yeah, I just wrote a little bit of code and it sent in my CV every day for the next 17 days. On day number 17, I get a call. Hi, this is so-and-so from Microsoft's recruitment firm. Our servers were down when they came up. All we saw is mask. mask. <laughs> Dude, what job are you applying for? <laughs> like, I don't know. And I didn't. And that's just, just yeah, like, I, I just want to work for you I guys. Just, yeah. So they brought me in for an interview. You went through seven interviews back then. I think you still do. Seven. So um, the first one is the recruitment agency. And then, mm. and then you speak to the engineers. And then you speak to the, 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 the team that you're going to be interviewing mm. for. And then the VP for that team. So mm. it's like... And then Bill Gates. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. So on my last interview, in fact, on my third or fourth interview, speaking to an engineer, it's like... They're trying to be smart because like, you know, he says to me, why are men hold, why are men holes round? Yeah. Right. I'm like, dude, I knew the answer, but I'm like, dude, I'm from a guys. I'm from Soweto. There mm -hmm. are no men holes in Soweto. Hey, he felt so bad because sure. he was trying to be smart. I hit him with like a race <laughs> card. And like, he, I could see his brain going, tick, tick, don't compute. You know, like, tick, 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 tick. I could see him. And, um, uh, uh, and they run because obviously drill bits are round. But anyway, so I, I then on my final interview was with the VP of the team I was going to join, Maureen. Mm -hmm. And I came in with my... Uh, These like, things are like easy for you, like oh, obviously because the drill bits. Yeah, That's like a form of knowledge privilege. But come on, it's just a basic VBS script. We all know men are around. Because I was going to ask, because the drill bits that they draw, I mean... Yeah. Okay. Are you aware of that? That there's certain knowledge privilege you have that to other people is like, yo, I didn't know that. I think back then hectic. maybe you could argue knowledge privilege. I don't think that stacks up anymore because to just it sit could on be YouTube. the spaces you're in now. Also, no, like information is really people don't ever. consume information. They that, watch bums on social but media. But that's a decision. That's that's but a okay. decision is a form of privilege. But it's still a decision. Okay. Please continue. Yeah. Sorry. So now I'm meeting the big boss, Maureen. Mm. So I come with my laptop bag and I say, listen, um, I've gone through six other people. Let me, let me just tell you what I would do if you gave me a job. Sure. Right. And I'd like to present it to you. She goes like, she's now, I have dreadlocks then. She's like, doesn't know what to do with this. Like sure. the whole company is Lily White. I think there's three other black people Pity. in the entire thing. Right. So, um, I start presenting slide number three. She leans, literally leans out like this, calls another, uh, another VP who was walking past mm. Mike Cathy. Well, now I actually heads up Nando's. Cause Mike comes. Mike co Cathy. Yeah. Okay. Mike, come see this. Hey, Mike comes in. Now it's a table. It's like a, like a boardroom. Mm. It's glass, but you know, small one. Um, in fact, it's her private boardroom. So, you know, you know, <laughs> she, she's the big cheese, right? Sure. 
so now they're both sitting there. I'm presenting. They hired me on slide number six. That's proper. Yeah. And, to, and my first day at Microsoft, I was in London. I didn't even know where my desk was in South Africa. All of this, you're going to still attribute to brute force and I work hard and... I would say most of it, yeah, at least 70%. And the rest is luck. Luck. None please. of it is luck. I think I might be brilliant. I think I might be different. No, I've met and worked with brilliant people. So like I, know I what said, the spaces is. that you're in, you're probably just around brilliant people. So you're like, mm, actually, people are pretty smart. Like, no, maybe no, they're smart, smart people are space. smart, bro. You feel it. They're like, they're really, really smart. I know where I sit in the pecking order and I'm not there. And it's not humility. It's just real. You like, got hired on slide six with the big boss, Maureen, calling in Mike, a VP, as he was passing. And on your first day, you were in London and you didn't know where your desk Honestly, was. Honestly? And I, you're saying I it's doubt like, they hired me because of the content of my presentation. Okay. They hired me for the showing up. You believe so? I know so. Uh, no one has ever done that. Mm. And that's just, that's it. There's nothing, I mean, those guys, like, there's nothing. You know, you get to Microsoft, like, you want to bring everybody you know and say, come see what I see. Sure. It, like, you go to head off uh, HQ, like uh, in Seattle, there's like, I don't know, 80 or 90 buildings. When you book a meeting, you have to book 15 minutes because you have to catch a shuttle. If you're in building 45, you have to go to building, I don't know, 32. It, you can't explain how high the bar is. When we talk, we talk about continents, EMEA, Europe, Middle East, Africa. They like, so that automatically changes you because the world is so much bigger. Hmm. It's impossible to think small. So you want people to see, because what's the point if I'm the only one who's seeing it? It's like, it feels so wrong. It's like I'm eating a burger and everybody's got white lips and they're hungry. Hmm. Just, it doesn't. You have a curious mind. I think so, yeah. And you study people and things? Yeah, I, I love that part. Behavioral I'm going to ask like a, a yeah. it's an unfair question because I don't know if you've done the research. Mm -hmm. What would you think would be the reason that someone like an Elon Musk is able to think of ideas at the scale that he does. I'm listening to you speak about Microsoft and the size and the, and a lot of people, and by a lot of people, I'm including billionaires, mm -hmm. millionaires, look at Elon Musk and maybe arguably a Kanye West. Where do you get the balls to think so big? I mean, I think it's a really good segue to look at the Vuyo story, how I saw an advert and I created like mm. um, a business based on a TV ad. You know, Vuyo is a big, big dreamer. Um, Classic ad. I hope it's still on YouTube for people yeah. to check it out. Vuyo was selling Borovos Rolls. Rolls. Yeah. I mean... There was a there was a franchise, I think, in Brahm. That was know. mine. Really? I built that business. Yeah, that's my business. That's fucking proper. <laughs> so you went and you took the ad and you put it to yeah, real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Congrats, bro. I yeah. didn't know that. Such <laughs> a small world. Yeah. Sorry, please continue. Now imagine I come from IT. Like, what the hell do I know about... I just saw this ad and I thought, I wonder if it's based on a true story. I Googled to see if Vuyo actually existed because it was such a well-executed ad. Oof. I thought, I thought, big oh, pick up on this guy. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, Googled. Ads like that are meant to come back like yeah. over and over because it's a classic. Yeah. Googled, there was no Vuyo. Trademarked it, became Vuyo. Brilliant. Opened restaurants and yeah. Don't give us a summary, bro. Please go. Sorry. We're still at Microsoft. Seattle, London. Yeah. I don't know if you, you don't want to touch, speak much on Microsoft. How do you the go only from thing Microsoft I would, to getting out? The only thing I would tell, like, I just not shared the story, but it's like, it's amazing how nuanced stories as a black person you have to sort of go through. Because mm. I, you know, now I'm working with really intelligent people. Like I want, remember like one day I'm standing, I think it was either at the canteen. So the guy in front of me, I'm like, no, man, this guy, Unugi Pedro, like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, why you smell like fuel? He goes, uh, no, I crashed my plane this morning. I was like, levels, you know? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what do I do when I start making money? Um, because I was a systems engineer, I was a geek with dreadlocks. My first boss, no, third boss, most, I'll tell you two quick stories. So my first boss, Ashika, used to say, Miles, focus on your strengths, because if you focus on your weaknesses, you'll have really strong weaknesses. 
Hmm. That's an amazing first boss to have. Someone will hmm. tell you that don't worry about the parts you suck at. Focus on the stuff you're really good it's at. Gary Vaynerchuk, he loves that. Because typically, corporates will say, no, you suck at this. Let's Work put your performance it. improvement Training, on. what, what? You're like, no, this fuck chick that. Was like, Outsource the fuck out of that. Zone in on what you're fucking yeah. Michael Jordan or oh, LeBron James. Shout out to LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James, whatever it. Yeah. That's dope. Ah, chic. A chic, a shame. She passed away a couple of years back. Yeah. Anyway, so, but then down the line, I had another amazing boss, Moss Gondwe. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the trailblazers in IT, like Moss Gondwe. Yeah, okay. and he said he walked past me one day in my dreadlocks and goes, "What do you want to do in life?" I'm like, well, I, don't, "I don't know, maybe run my own business one day." He says, "Look at you, you got dreadlocks." <laughs> <laughs> hey, the guy dressed me down, bro. I was like, "Do you think you like there's any of it in?" Sure. Yeah. One day I came to work, I cut off my dreadlocks. Everybody walked past me; they couldn't recognize sure. me. Sure. And he called me into his office. He says, I'd like to offer you a, a job in his team. And he told me one thing is that if you're ever going to run your business one day, you need to learn how to sell. And mm-hmm. I'm going to teach you. Because if you go home tonight and you say to your woman that uh, you want to go out with the boys and she says no, a sale happened there. Sure. Uh, but whoever, uh, different parties bought the story, but 100%. a sale happened, right? So he taught me a lot about selling, um, cleaned me up, wore suits, mostly for self-confidence because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm selling to, I was selling $2 million deals. That's one contract. It's $2 million. I ran a $12 million um, budget for myself as a human at Microsoft. So I was running essentially at today's exchange rate, like a 200 million rand business in my 20s. You know what's scaring me? I'm meeting so many young people that are working for multinational companies in this country Yeah, that are telling me things like, we just signed a $5 million deal in yeah. Dubai. We just, I'm like, why Why are people not aware of this? Everyone is trying to get like a job, Nyana, uh, no, dude. KFC, Edgar's, some are trying to be accountants, lawyers. Like there are kids signing deals with governments, whether it's tech, whether it's manufacturing plants, whether it's... yeah. And it's real. And the comms, yes, yes. the commission on that And was the commission real. is what they normally tell me about. They're like, listen, I'm actually, I'm in a dealership right now. The finance lady said, you can go. Let me it's, tell you about signed. the dealership story. I rock up in shorts. $12 million dollar one-man division. Yeah. Hectic. Sorry. Thinking of the comm on that. So I go buy a car. I go to Merck, look in a C63. No one stood up. I'm wearing shorts. No one bothered. No one stood up. Like, no one stood up for me. So I asked, I had to go to the... Sure. To learning the, season. The learning season. The learning season. And I'm like, um, the guy says, no, we, we don't do um, test drives. Oh, you're a showroom. You don't... Ah, Ngapuma walked across the road. There was investment cars, I think, then. I, I saw a very nice starter pack Porsche. I was mm-hmm. like... I'd like to test drive that. The guy says, sure, white guy. He says, sure. Took my ID um, and then pulled it out for me and gave me the key. Mm. And I said, aren't you coming? He says, no. Do you want me talking in your left ear while you drive? Go, go. Dude, that's I drove dope. around the block that's, that's <laughs> and I dope. came back and I, I, and I bought the car. That's selling, by the way. Yeah. But look, he was gambling, but yeah, that's a salesman but that done. It was done. Now the problem I had is that now I have to go back to the office the, the next week. Sure. Now I drive this. I used to park in basement three because the only other person who had a Porsche was the MD. Because all the other people are self-actualized. They've got planes, they've got farms, they don't care about material. Me, yeah, I was what? farms and planes and shit. Like this was Microsoft SA. Hmm. Do you think they're still hiring today, like for normal, <laughs> just... I think things are, are different, but yeah, I mean... As Muntu is not, uh, we're in the wrong place. Why am I drinking? <sighs> Sorry, Miles, please. No, it's your on. journey, bro. Like, and it, it, everybody's got no, their No, my own. journey must get to planes and farms <laughs> fast. Sorry. True. Yeah, so... So people had self-actualized. They were making money, but they were not there trying to drive fancy sports cars. That was you, you bad boy from know. ADK, trying yes. to look... Yeah, yeah. Hectic. But I'm grateful for it because I got to do it young yeah. and scratch the itch and get yeah. over it. Where I look at my peers, they'll go buy a bigger one, bigger one, bigger one, bigger one. Mm. I got to do it 
And I was like, get it yeah, out of your system. It was cool. It's nice. Elon Musk, I think, yeah. has spoken about that as yeah. well. Yeah, well, we, and you have to do it. Like, it's like, because then you know you can. Sure. Now it's its choice not to. It's mm. like, I call it um, like reverse snobbery. I mean, I drive like a 2000, a year 2000 Audi. It's got 300,000 kilometers. <laughs> it's like, that's proper flex, bruh. And the upside of that is I can drive anywhere. Alex, Deep Sluit, anywhere. Sure. All right. Um, but it's such, it's liberating. Mm. I don't owe anybody. So your decisions are clearer. It's, it's, it's the ultimate luxury. Your, that and being an entrepreneur where you decide what you do every day. Your decisions are clearer. There was a time when I said, I wish everyone, well, at the time, could get a million bucks. Get that shit out of their system. Yeah. Blow it if they blow it. Build something so that they can now be like, let me actually think about what I want to do with my life. Mm. Because up until that point, you're not making clear decisions. And you you may chase a path that you normally, that you maybe reach at age 60, 65 if you're lucky. Yeah. And then realize, I think I fucked up my life. Yeah, also you become a slavery of it, right? Yeah. Because it's now the, the next bigger thing. Because, sure. um, but at the same time, I did have some privilege, if it's to be said. Because if I look at it, why didn't I just do it more bigger? And when you connect the dots backwards, I mean, I had a car at Varsity, right? Oh. So connecting the do dots backwards, that's yeah, two jobs. Yeah. And sure. that changed because while well, other kids were drinking, when you have a car at Varsity, the amount of responsibility that comes with that, mm -hmm. because you could be the girl, I mean, dude, yes. I mean. You're a god. Oh, yeah. At right? Varsity with a car, so, you're a god. So you, I could have been, you know, I could have dropped out a brute force. I yeah. showed up and I just, why did you have a car at Varsity? Um, again, my mother, but yeah. mostly my brother, because um, he was working it then, and he gave me his like hand me down. Shout car. out to your brother. Yeah, no, like, That's and in fact, dope. I went into IT because of my brother. He rocked up with a computer one day, fell off the back of a truck. I guess <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what to do with it. He gave sure. it to me, and that's literally. Uh, in fact, I owe a lot to him. Shout in out fact, to your I brother. probably don't say enough about like the impact he's had in my life. What's the age gap? Uh, about 10 years, nine years. But you know, the nice thing about him, it was like, because he was a street smart one. So my mother always said, like, when apartheid ended, one will, one would have been throwing the stones, one will lead when the stones have settled kind of yeah. thing. So we all, we had our respective lanes, yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, and my story wouldn't have happened if his um, didn't. I mean, I remember in, in the, eight, like, before 94, maybe it was 90s, whatever, mm. like cops would rock up at our house and at three o'clock would just beat the windows. Like you felt like there's an mm. earthquake and they were coming to, to take him to go interrogate. Mm. And you don't see him for like a week and he comes back. And those buggers were clever, eh? those cops. They would hit you, they would put um, um, oranges and so in, a so towel, sure. in a towel and beat the hell out of, because then you, you have internal bruising. Hmm. And like, and there's so many people that walk amongst us who gave us this freedom that we, we do now have. Yeah. And A, you don't know about them. And B, you know, there's no recognition to that fact. That's why I'm saying, like, we need to have a level of kindness. But of self-love. Yeah. I've got a, a sister that is 12 years younger than me. Her name mm. is Penrose. My brother's three years younger than me. He sometimes doubles up as my older brother. <laughs> but I'm just trying to think, since I asked about your dad, that in some way, I don't know what your relationship is like, but your older brother became like a father. Mm -mm. He gave you... No, no, no. I mean, in oh. the sense that he gave you a car. Oh, yeah. He yeah, exposed yeah, you to a computer. Yeah. Things yes. that you would assume. Yeah, that's a good I point. I got my first car from my dad. My dad introduced me that's, to a computer. So that's a fair shout point. out to him for that. Yeah, fair point. Actually... Like I said, I don't know what your relationship is like, but just for those things... Yeah, it's not like dad-like, sure. but... I can see how you can, um, you know, draw that line. Sure. And because I had never looked at it that way. But yeah, definitely played a very, 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 he continues to play a very significant role. Porsche and then to where you are today? Um, yeah. So what then happened was. Um, you went from a Porsche to a Ferrari and then Bill <laughs> Gates gifted you his G5. And then you decided, oh, shame, you know, the people in Africa need me. And then you came back. No, that's definitely not like that. <laughs> <laughs> not sure when I would have come back if that was the case. 
Um, so no, and then I um, reason why I left Microsoft was um, I, I don't want to tell that story, but it's an interesting story. Okay. But I left um, and we started our own software company with a colleague of mine, Michael. Okay. Um, I know we've got such colonial names, Michael and Miles, um, both black. <laughs> um, he was like, um, I would sell the technology, he would build it. So one day we're coming from a client who didn't pitch up. We're like, we could actually do this for ourselves. Yeah. Right? Michael and Miles, my yeah. my, yeah. Mimi. And yeah. funny, I'm now telling the story. I was like, I'm saying, ah, I'm not going to tell. This is the story. Hit. Um, so we start out, we just like, then, then we decided, like, we should just do this ourselves. Mm. And we did. And we started this business. Fast forward about two and a half years later, Microsoft approached us and said, listen, they were going to do this equity equivalent um, thing. Um, because they were multinational, they couldn't sell equity so it was those b things mm -hmm. so but they because they invested in south africa so what they will do instead instead of people buying equity they'll give equity equivalent so they'll give the value of that mm -hmm. equity to startups in in south africa cash yeah essentially half a billion it was 500 million rands of investment so we actually bid for that we were one of Ultimately, we were one of four companies, I think, that ultimately went with. Okay. So it was like 100 million rands um, investment in our startup. Two men. By then, we had um, in acquired three or four other uh, white businesses okay. because they needed the transformation, whatever. Sure. It was a really good model because we knew how to sell the technology mm -hmm. and they knew they had the developers and, and, and the stuff like sure. that. And what people don't tell you is things change very quickly. Mm. Before they change, you get a hundred million. Mm. So it's like, oh, we, we won the bid. Let's get to work. Pretty much. There's yeah. no going berserk like, what the fuck? We've got a hundred million. Or do you think you'd been exposed to amounts through work such that a hundred million didn't scare you anymore? No, like, because it's an investment, right? So it's going to the business. And and I think that's what, you know, people confuse. Like market cap of a business is often not like it's physical money. It's, yeah. you know, um, but in this case, it was an investment. It was going to be spread out over a couple of years and so forth. So uh, I remember signing those contracts. Yes, I've never signed so many Lever Ash files in my life. I they were imagine. like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and you got to sign everyone. Anyway, so what then happened was Michael, because when we started, those businesses were were minority shareholders, but mm. because we needed to increase the shareholding to to meet the criteria. Sure. Um, and then Michael one day comes to me, he says, "But dude, because the one company we we bid with, which we owned, mm. um, it's the the white directors, the other core directors mm. were husband and wife. Sure. And the wife was this." CFO and the husband was the CEO and we didn't mind at the time when we were minority shareholders mm. right because we had other we we're busy but Michael says dude hi this can't happen this is a sexually transmitted relationship <laughs> you can't, it's you know it's the, the governance and we know how Microsoft works this is going to be a problem sure. for us down the line and so we I'm like hey dude let sleeping dogs lie I'm like let's just ride this thing and just sure. move hey Michael won't let it go Ah, we get in the boardroom and he tells them that, look, this has got to change, right? You can't. Fast forward three months, we, the four of us, us and them, couldn't mm. sit in the same room. It went sideways this is the, that fast. Things change fast. Mm. Now, there's 100 million, right? Mm. We walked away from it. I don't know what that means. It means... It got so bad so quick that like the Microsoft and the lawyers and everybody, they send mediators and like, because it, it, technically it was like marriage counseling sure. at that point, right? Sure. Um, we, we got like logger hit so fast, so hard. Mm. Uh, I suppose we were young, dumb, full of cum kind of thing. And <laughs> um, yeah, we walked away. It was like, you know, fuck, fuck kind of thing. And potential money you were going to make. We walked away from it. I can tell you how it feels to walk away from that kind of money. Jesus. 
Yeah. I remember I sat with uh, a gent who mentored me for a short time, Carlo Gonzaga. He founded Scooters Pizza at 26 and then it became Taste Holdings. Yeah, yeah. No they acquired Starbucks and mm. Domino's and, and whatever. But I remember him saying in passing, be careful of business partners that you bring into any business. Because he says splitting a business partnership at a certain level is multiple times tougher than getting divorced. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Like, and it, it's exactly like having gone through a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. You've been through a divorce? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. That uh, was milder. Uh, this. Sure, did. Yeah, it's rough. What do you guys do when you walk away from 100 bar? Jeez. That's my life dream. If I can get 100 bar of assets. Sure, let's just go with that. Yeah. I think I'll be done. In terms of if ever there's a chasing money goal, which I don't really have, but it would be 100 million. It's a little bit liberating. It's like, you know, people go to or get in at Stanford and then quit or drop out. Yeah. It's the same flex. It's like, um, not at the time, you know, sure. I mean, it's stupid. You dropped out of Harvard. <laughs> yeah. Like, Miles, what were you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had other interests that kind of... Yeah. yeah. And and we grew our business. We ran. And um, mm. and then, yeah, I I exited. I saw the TV ad. Oh, boy, you're such a big dreamer. It's like, yeah. that's how that link happened. It was like, I just exited this business. I was like... Kept on seeing this ad and wondering if Uvuyo exists. Yeah, and I had the time. Sure. Um, you had money? Um, not as much as I would like because when all these things settle between lawyers and all sorts of things, you know, um, it, it's a journey, man. Like, that's Did you have a, to pay lawyers and things? Oh, man, there was one time I think I had four sets of lawyers. Do you have, um, I don't know if you're allowed to speak about it. Yeah. And you don't have to answer an estimate of how much you could have potentially spent during that rough time? Um, it, there was a lot of zeros. Okay. Yeah. And that's like zeros the, with causing chest pains. Yeah. Oh no, I've seen... <sighs> the I've way I feel about lawyers as I get older, man. Ah. Yeah, I've seen things. Okay, so, yeah. so you're watching this ad and, and you have a little bit of money, not as much as you'd like, but... Yeah. And 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 that, and that matters to me because the Voyo story, like the stuff I've told you, I've never really divulged. Maybe some of it in my book, but like not to this level, mm. because I've never wanted the Voyo story. I've never wanted all the other stuff to take away from the Voyo story in its own merit. I hear you. Like oh, he had made money and he had money to blow. Because it's far oh, from Oh, your it. parents were rich. Yeah, so yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. Because um, it takes away from it. It takes it, away a lot from it. Yeah, yeah, and because it wasn't like that. It mm. literally, it it was as pure as you seeing something and, and doing it yeah. and following it through. And the pains that came with it and, you know, like the struggle is real. The startup conversation we were having mm. went through all of that. You started Vuyos? Yeah, so I started Vuyos at the Foyes Farmers Market. Okay. Yeah, all I had. It's moved now. It was at four ways. Now it's, it's in, in modern modern Fontaine. Modern Fontaine. Yeah. Okay. So you rolls. started as a as a store. Yeah. You were selling. Yes. From me. making money, you're there. Yeah. Me. Tomato sauce, mustard, yeah. barbecue, chili. Yeah. Smelling like gas. And yeah. This was just something that was calling to you. Like I have to do this. I didn't think it through, to be honest. I just did it. Did you Did you want to, in your head, turn the ad into real life? Do you think that's what was driving you? No, I just saw an opportunity. What that, was the opportunity? There's no opportunity there. It's selling Purifos rolls, but with a brand name which has an ad. Let's put it in context. SAB had spent approximately 60 million rand on that campaign. By the time I finished, uh, I mean, I'm mixing the stories because sure. the market came before whatever, but like, just bear with me. By the time I'd done, by the time the story got, like you, how you caught Gualisa and sure. propelled it into media. Yeah. And I didn't want that because I, I was trying to be under wraps sure. and just get focused on the business. Still piloting and building. Yeah, and we're still building, you. you're right. Um, Jesus, you know how many people call us for franchises, dude? Like, anyway, I digress. Um, so That's dope. I must come sell your franchise <laughs> and commission. Um, $12 million. So go to investment cars. <laughs> Sorry, it's please gone. carry on. Um, so, 
Uh, where was I? You were speaking about you had four ways farmers market. Uh, and you were trying to explain the link between SAP, that 60 million for the edge. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So by the time I'd finished, one, the, the story caught wind about this guy who took the ad and created a whole business yeah. and it just blew up. That increased it by another 40, 50 million rands of free PR. So by that time, I owned 100 million, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> How's this for irony? Jeez. Yeah, like seriously, I have over back. Now I'm. I sit with an asset that's worth 100 million rands in brand equity, at least. It's not cash. Sure. I can't take it to the bank. Sure. Mara, it doesn't change the fact that it's... And if you understand finance and accounting and numbers, that's essentially what it was. Yeah. Now, all I had to do is build it in. Sure. Now, in other words, I had the shell. Now, I just needed to build the guts sure. of a business to... That's what I saw. Okay, I hear you. I've, yeah. I've seen like a, I don't know if it's a meme of this person saying I've got a billion dollars in my head. How do I take it out into? Yeah. Um, you wrote off the back of the ad. I had a fish and chip shop close to Gandhi Square in 2012. Mm. So it's called Panels, not Vuyos. <laughs> Even though Vuyos was very inspiring. Mm. Um, I remember there was a, a young Jewish guy at the time, Greg Cohen. Mm. He was working at Bayport and he was sent by the Nando's founders. In particular, yeah. Robbie Brozen. Brozen. Mm. Yeah. Great guy. Bro they, Most yeah, amazing. The, the guys that you meet. But it, Robbie actually connected me with Carlo Gonzaga as yeah. well. So they sent Greg to come and check my shop and tear it apart and tell me what's bad about it. And the name was part of the issue. No one knows who you are. You haven't mm. built a brand mm. value. The other thing was my colors were yellow and red at a time when fish and chips were blue and yellow. Yeah. Why yellow and red? No, I like the colors. I <laughs> get rid of them. Mm -hmm. do yellow and blue I'm like why it's gonna look like those other guys yes. he's like exactly mm -hmm. he's like these guys spend millions in ads and people are gonna walk in here thinking that you are them yeah and you're just leveraging off their colors yeah um, I was still eh about it but I understand now yeah brand like the opportunity of here's a brand here's something that people think is dope mm -hmm. How can you build a monetizable thing? It's already been done for you. Yeah, but when you think about it, like I had learned a lot. Sure. Remember, I worked for a multinational, mm -hmm. one of the top brands in the world. Yeah. So I got to have learned something. Sure. You know what I mean? So uh, it's it, your journey is a series of antecedent events. You are who you are because all these things. Antecedent. Had, yeah. All, all these things that had to happen. Uh for you to be who you are. You can't skip a step. I hear you. Right, so the reason I, first I'm telling the whole backstory is because if you look at it in isolation, it looks like luck played a bigger role than it actually did, sure. and it did play a role. I mean, I still had to see the ad, and yeah. then I still had to do something about it, yeah. right? But the doing something about it could have been, the reason probably is a lot of the stuff that had happened to me sure. previously to get there. Um, antecedent. Yeah. I'm going to go look that up. Yeah, it just means uh, the steps before. So for the people that don't know the story, just or who have heard the story and maybe forgotten it, yeah. you mentioned you can only connect the dots backwards. And I know Steve Jobs says this line in one of his speeches at some yeah. Stanford. university. Stanford. Mm. People don't know the story of, I'm, I'm linking it to your story of how I think he was adopted and he ended up getting to tertiary. And I don't know if he dropped out or what happened, but he ended up squatting with someone. And at some point, he ended up going, doing these ARB courses, and one of them being calligraphy. Yeah. And that's how he ended up with fonts yeah. in computers, which you didn't have before. Right. And some of the other experiences that you have, and it's like, you almost can't. You almost can't skip them, because if yeah. you skip them, you don't have this unique view, brand and person mm. that is Miles. And we could probably take it to Alisa as a container to a person that doesn't know and actually break it down and almost be able to point at Cezanne, St. Benedict, your mom. And that's why they, you, you can't, because my, I now work with a ton of entrepreneurs. I own a food accelerator called Wakanda and we work with amazing You're talent. speaking too fast. You now work with a bunch of entrepreneurs well, I, I, I'm, at I'm a trying, food accelerator called Wakanda. Yeah, I was, okay. yeah, I was trying to. For the slower kids that uh, didn't do st the systems engineering. No, I just didn't feel like so many <laughs> things. And like, oh, this guy, it's like, Sorry. you know, and so... Um, the why I was telling you that is like a lot of people say to me, dude, like, oh, I've got such a great idea, but I don't want to tell you because I don't want people copying it or stealing it. I'm like, what makes it a great idea is you. Yeah. That's it. Right. 
um, I can copy it, but I'll never execute it the way you will because you live with it. It's in your mind's eye. You'll see it the, like you. And the more people you speak to, it's actually the superpower because they're helping you bulletproof it. Sure. So like if even if I look at like the Gualisa or even Voyos and all of that, is that what makes it cool is the insights that are uniquely lived experience. Yeah. Right. So um, I will look at things that I mean, I've been struggled with like my ops guy sometimes. I'm like, how could you not see the, that light is out or like like there's things I see yeah. and and then it's painful for me I'm like how do you not see it yeah. like you know what I mean so I have to continuously teach myself Kuti, you know we come from we look at things differently your, you your experiences sculpt the type of eyes ears nose mouth taste feel that you have Picasso is Picasso he can look at the same subject matter as you and I mm. but it's only a Picasso because Picasso painted Vuyo's to Kualisa, that so you left Microsoft yeah. system engineer you now go into food mm -hmm. is this what you went into into food sorry can I interrupt no please time. feel like, free uh, you, what time do, do you have to leave sorry it's half past 12 shit are I you know. late what time are we supposed to finish at 1 eh? latest one uh, yeah latest one but look we can go for I don't know how much time you have 5 to 10 I've minutes I've got to catch a flight um but I'm gonna check in. Uh, latest, maybe ten past one. No, we can we can wrap up in like fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, yeah. Please feel so 15, free. 15, 20 minutes is fine. Yeah. I'll I'll yeah. check time. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Do, do you do? No. Edit, please edit? relax. Yeah, you, this is a chill vibe. Yeah. Uh, You're gonna cut this part it's out. Twelve thirty-three now. You're joking. So we'll, no, we're not. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> what will you call it? Twelve fifty. 1250, 1250, 1255. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Systems engineering, Vuyo's, now you're going to food. Yeah. That's Is this what happened? Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're in Vuyo's now, but like food, because you are a chef. No, I only started to be a chef later on. Um, okay. And that was purely because now I'm running restaurants and stuff. And but what does running restaurants mean? So Vuyo's? Yeah. And then? So, yeah, I mean, it's so, oh, I started at the market, right? Selling okay. Corvos rolls, right? And um, interestingly, I, I learned a lot at the market because I know nothing about food other than I like eating it three times a day. Sure. Like, you know, nothing more than that. Right. Except I have a brand and the guy who works with me, Peter, I found him at my local favorite restaurant. Right. Because okay. he always knew my name and my order and he always smiled. So when I thought, like, what do I do? I don't know anything. I went I went and I said, sure. dude, come over. An important lesson there is that like in life, no matter how menial or whatever your job feels inconsequential you don't know who's watching mm -hmm. so never just do it in j like like the one thing that would frustrate me in my restaurant like if anybody drags their feet mm. like shh, 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 and you hear it in the mall like, I'm mama, like mm. people drag their feet like dude you got one job move yeah. your own body like yeah. you know like if you don't if you can't do that it's like it's energy man yeah. the, the rest won't follow you right? live intentionally 100%. So Peter did. And he always had a smile. Like Peter's automatic. It's just <laughs> smile, right? It's like, that's the guy. Yeah. So we bought a, a grill at um, at game yeah. that day. First time, first day at the Foyce market. We, we bought the grill at 8 o'clock in the morning. We were going to serve at 9. We rock up. Uh, learned a lot at Microsoft customer service. Was like, I don't want the grill. Um... I don't want to be grilling and have my back to the customer. Sure. It's like, yeah. I don't know why that felt important to me. It's such, such an odd thing, but it felt really important yeah. to a point we had to go find tools to remove the legs of the grill so mm. we can put it on the table. Yeah. Only to realize the table is made out of wood. Mm. So, damn it. That's not going to, I mean, this is not rocket science, but, yeah. you know, we're still cooking with gas. So I find one of those concrete slab things that you walk on, you know, mm. uh, we put that between the table and the grill. Ah, we pump, bruh. Stop You're an cooking. innovator. You're a problem solver. No, it's just brute force. It was like, ah, uh, it in. brute force. This is innovation <laughs> at its most basic level. And we started cooking. Yeah. And week number four or five, we're running queues, man, 20 deep, like deep, like, and 
And I remember in week number five, Peter turns around to me, he says, Miles, we're on fire. I go, I know, look at the crowd, we're on fire. He goes, no, 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 we're on fire. He forgot to put the thingy <laughs> and the table was burning and the shade netting was melting and I realized the, the floor... on fire. <laughs> yeah, not that kind. And I realized Jeez. the floor is made out of wood chips. It was lit. And, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so that then moved to restaurants. I opened a restaurant in Bromfontein. Mm. I thought we'd print money there, man. Sure. Like students selling Borovos rolls. Oh, you at Brom there by the pick and pay center? Yes, yes. Do you ever study that center? Because franchises... Never. People piloted franchises nothing, over and over and they keep... There. But you've I seen it. it. Yeah, I met the, the, the owner, Mike, um, uh, Mark. Mark, he died. Um, the owner of Redefined Properties. Mike, well, his surname is going to come to me. Okay. Mark, Mark. Anyway... Made him shout, years out, later. shout out to all these people. The redefine. Yeah. I remember meeting Gerald Olitsky, yeah. OPH. Yeah. He was my landlord down in the CBD. But I remember there. It was almost like a space to pilot. No, it wasn't to pilot. Things they, just went there to die. So I he, he told me. So he says you had a restaurant there. There was a franchise there that sold in Yamanga Pagat at some point. I thought it was nothing sport. worked there, but. Nothing. Was and it Pansula Bites? Or, yes, it was Pansula Bites. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. And he says. Dude, you should have come to me. I would have told you nothing works there. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of Vitz and Bram by the students. You're like, come on. The interesting Can't part, go wrong. Mark, Mark Napier, I think. The, the interesting part about him telling me this, mm. for the longest time, I thought I was a failure for not me being able to make it work. Yeah. Right? And then here's the guy, and that's privilege, right? Like... You know, when you're poor, no one gives you anything for free. When mm. you've got money, people give you stuff for free. Yeah. That piece of advice is exactly that example for me. Mm. Because I would have paid real money to have gotten that advice when I was struggling. Sure. Right? Now I get it when it's after the fact. Yeah. Right? But it changed. It, it did, did me wonders nonetheless. Mm. Because... Because sometimes you, it's not you who fails. You said your one restaurant failed. Sometimes it's just timing. Yeah. In fact, again, which leads to luck, right? Because timing is three quarters of luck in my mind. It's I understand what right you're place, saying. right time. You can do exactly the same thing a year or two years later, it pops. So many businesses have blossomed under lockdown. Timing, who would have known? Who would have known, right? So, um, yeah, so... Last piece, last piece of advice before Bram, um, mm. Robbie Prozen, Nando's, yeah. asked me who my landlord was. I told him OPH, like Gerald, I know Gerald. And then he was like, so I'm guessing you're not paying rent. I'm like, no, I'm paying rent. He's like, no, man, you're a startup, you're a no-name brand. You should have told Gerald, can you please give me six to 12 months, no rent while I build? I'm like, I wouldn't never you fucking don't know. thought about it, yeah. Sorry, and Bram. By the way, Robbie Brosen equally had that major impact of in, course. in my story too. Like, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I um, thought you meant major impact. He would have had the ability to speak to Gerald. Me. No, he did the same stuff he did for you. I'm so amazed. I thought he just did it for me. It's like, now you're telling you're me I wasn't special. special. You're not that special. Damn it. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, and I think an important lesson there, and that's why I run the accelerator, is that you need to pay this stuff forward, man. Yeah. Right, you do, and Ingamla do, yeah. and they helping us. You and me, we are. Where do we feature in their lives? But and they, they do when they, when they meet passionate. I'll tell you this specifically about white Africans, Jewish, and some Indian Muslim entrepreneurs. Specifically, the first generation. The first generation is hard because it's luck. Mm. That one you never know. The kids yeah. afterwards, there's business yeah. systems. There's when they meet a young passionate person, they know. They get so excited because you kind of remind them of themselves and they're like, look, I'm going to be what I didn't have at yeah. your time. And yeah. I know there's a chance if you ever blow up, number one, I might get early equity yes. and become super wealthy. Mm -hmm. Number two, you might uh, help my kids one day. Number three, you might invent fire. Yes. You might come up with the cure for cancer that my great grandson, it will be because I helped you. They but understand that something that I think some privileged middle class people don't understand that they close the doors, the after doors them, behind that, them yeah. although i think i look a little bit differently I, I i wouldn't say those are not valid points sure but i think they generally do it because they care okay and why i say that is because often they've already made the money sure 
right? It's like, you know, another Bentley on top of another. It's, sure. it's become, uh, right? And they're already self-actualized. So they're yeah. not driven by money. They're driven by purpose. It's yeah. like, like, I genuinely care and want South Africa to be a better place. Mm. I like, that's it. Like, yeah. A lot of white Indian, let's speak about white. A lot of white South Africans are passionate about South Africa. Mm. And so many black people are not aware of that, that they really want this country to work. It's a bloody awesome country, it's dude. It's a fucking amazing I, it's country. It's a no brainer. I've been places. I can tell you. When I get on a plane coming home, and not because it's home, yeah. well, mostly because it's home, <laughs> but I've been to countries I'm like, hmm, hmm. and there are countries who are like, okay, yeah. okay. But yeah, ah, oh, man, there's nothing like it. We've got everything. Yeah. You know, the one that frustrates me most, you see people leaving Eastern Cape coming to Joburg. Yeah. You know how fertile the soil is in the Eastern yeah. Cape? Like, if we just got our act together, maybe even simple things, like, in my mind, if we could specialize provinces. Yes. Your province, you do that. Yes. You just do that. Because when you graduate kids out of varsity, if you specialize in this, you're going there. Yes. And then that forces an ecosystem of businesses that service that, right? Then you don't have situations where people leave other provinces, come to Joburg either for work or even healthcare, mm -hmm. because... You've got talent that side sure. that has to go there because it's a specialist uh, specialist um, province. And I think if you start doing some of those low hanging things, um, changing degrees, like they sh we sh like there's degrees that, that I don't think are relevant anymore. We should yes. we should have the conversation. It's like yes. uh, uh. requires visionary leadership, and that's where people like or you hard come decisions. In. Well, visionary leadership will take the hard decisions. The Eastern Cape, one of the saddest stories, I think, in the country, especially because there's so many leaders and wealthy people from mm. there. But I've thought in my head, coming from, I'm from Newcastle in Wazulu, and we've got mines, we've got farms. And in my head, I'm like, if you've got something like that, why are the kids in that town not at least, at the very least, being trained? Places like Mpumalang, Malacheni, Sekunda. Why are the kids at the very least not being taught mining? So that you're like, ah, oh, look, I wanted to be a soccer player, I wanted to be, but since I'm from Secunda, I'll go into mine. Because at the very least, this is what we are good at. This yeah. is what we have. And and you, it begets better. Like, so if you start, you only get better because it's like um, there's economies of scale. Sure. And expertise grows mm. because the base is, is, it gets stronger. Sure. So, um, you know, like I always say, almost always, like lawyers breed lawyers. Mm. If you grow up in a house, good thing what? Like. And your parents are discussing cases. Come on. Sure. Like if there's two kids, one may not. <laughs> but the numbers, the odds. The, the, of, the odds go high. That's all I'm saying is yeah. that. It's just we need to be intentional about it. We've got an amazing country. Like, yeah. like I, I can't say that in any other way. I mean, I look at my life. Dude, I started probably the only person in the world who started a business based on a TV ad. If that doesn't give you, oh, do I know I send you castle or something? Sure. Sure. I'm not going to dispute the the context, the privilege, yeah. all of that. But I am still raised in Fuller North by a single mom. Yes. Like, that's a story. That's a template for most Yes. Young black South Africans, right? Brute force. Brute force. And that's why I keep saying to you, it's not necessarily talent yeah. or smarts. Because that means if you believe that you're not talented or the smart, it gives you the permit to to sit do this nothing. out, do nothing. I'm saying you can equally do it with just pure brute force. You sure. just keep showing up. Sure. I don't think we have you for much longer. <laughs> um, I don't know if you'd like to speak about... What do I want you to speak about? Koalisa. Mm. Do I want to speak about Koalisa? Maybe we can close off with the Koalisa. Your mm. plans for the year, potentially, and maybe also if you are open to people working with you and how mm. Mm. in some of the various things that you do. You know, Koalisa taught me a lot of things that, again, because it was in my lived experience, I'm now in you know, Alex, Townships, uh, Deep Slut, all these places. Sure. And um, you realize what the, there's so many, so much good 
and so much circumstantial issues mm. like like littering because that drives my mother crazy ergo drives me crazy drives me crazy as well like, bra it's a no brain it's like the dragging of the feet yeah. like come on come on because she says just because you're poor doesn't mean you you must be dirty and in fact i remember like growing up it's too poor clean why jared even if it was sure uh, but people would pour water sure. and and sweep it right we need we're clean yes. right like what happened right um it's a combination of things services a uh, lot more people in one space but mm. one key thing that i would have never thought is a problem is packaging mm. because when you're poor you're buying lots of small packages sure you, you, so in comparison you and i litter half because we buy sure so that's the other part we are solving for we're removing that in fact to a point that even the uh, the tetra packs the stuff that you put long life milk in mm. the boxes are recyclable the cardboard part but they all have this tin foil stuff that yes, you can't the, recycle in a line. Yeah. yeah we take that um with the organization we work with we take that and they make it into pallets okay. right and those pallets become the frames for our shelving at Qualisa jeez that's brilliant yeah i think that's really really cool you're going like futuristic at the highest level of innovation and Yeah, I'm like that I'm really stoked and we're doing it and it's not a theory it's being done, sure. right? Um so what that starts doing is the whole thing is circular and not in a bougie you know, circular. It's like <laughs> real. It's in where the people are, yeah. right? Because if you're going to move the needle, you need to move it for where the people are. Yeah. Right? So I I think that's the part I most enjoy um and it's the insights of the learnings so that's where where I was going it was that people will tell you what they're using amount disposable diapers so they use the same disposable diaper many times sure that's how bad things are sure they try them out by the yeah. way i've seen yeah. sometimes if it's just pee they try it out yes if it's not pee by tulu la whatever yeah. there yeah. and yeah. they i've seen that or leave it longer on the child oh now, that's not good now sure. Peniel, here's the problem right we can bitch and moan about government all these things we can maroksalayo mm. it's on you and i's watch yeah that that's that's happening yeah. right and and for me i'm always a big proponent of what can i do sure because i then get the agency and i have the urgency to do it mm. so i can sit up and blame or i can be part of the solution sure. right so and like i said once people start seeing you doing stuff you'd be surprised people then come in the story about the pushing of the, the car pushing. so yeah thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience and some of your stories you haven't shared before yeah thank you for telling us about your mom um and shout out to your brother for the car and the computer <laughs> um i think my biggest take out or two big take outs the one is we need more we'll call them educated skilled innovative young people to go and visit some of the really bad places in the country because those places are actually waiting for you and their opportunities yes go visit them try and solve the problems if you're smart enough if you're not smart enough but if you're smart enough look to monetize and monetize doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be rich it just means get other people to pay for those things and it also doesn't mean you are exploiting yes which is Share it, charity versus charity yeah which is more sustainable yeah. um so just a final point that sure. like gets me like one of the big questions we get at Gwalisa is why is it so wide open because moy is thing is pasa from my friend like you buy through a hole sure like ours a prison is, yeah cage. ours is wide open they go aren't you afraid go to one pasa john john i'm like dude if someone wants to steal in poop like they've earned it sure you know yeah take it mm. right and i think if you treat people with respect they give it back and they'll Touch protect, wood, and obviously they'll, and they'll protect your asset yeah. if it adds value to their life and it belongs to oma oh, mapul yeah right i'm just a custodian i help to get it all the quali says what our model is we work with community based organization mm. we are empowering the community members who've been doing this for years with little fanfare mm. or um support sure so now she can generate a little a little bit more income to support what she's been doing anyway so how how's that a bad thing 
The second thing is I always preach to people that we need to focus on our communities and you're, em you're emphasizing it towards the end that how do I make a change? There's national issues, provincial issues, they're beyond your scope. Mm. But things like littering, oh, do it. Ah, it's not my job. It's your neighborhood. It's your brand. It's your value. Um, exercise, cut the grass, clean your house mm. as an example. So thank you very much for highlighting that as well. Outside of brute force <laughs> showing up, there was one thing you said now that I wanted to pick up on. Um, a lot of South Africans complain about how this puzzle shop industry has been taken over by foreign people. Mm. Kualisa for me is potentially, may not be a, get to that level, but it's one way where South Africans doing what they've always been doing can in some way reclaim some, by reclaim is not to fight, mm. but reclaim in the sense that Give all mama what they've already been doing in a formalized way so that we can get our food. I'm actually yeah. conflicted with that. Um, my assistant was like, dude, you know, keep your opinions. Um, but hey, we're having a chat. Sure. So, um, and you did warn me about this part that, you know, people just... Yes, they leak. They, they wake lyrical. They get drunk on water. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're, you're Next thing. Yeah, I think having seen and traveled the world that's just the world the way it is it's yeah. globalized people who are having a tough time somewhere will go find a better life they do it within the country yeah it's brute force they will go somewhere mm -hmm. and and they will artwork the people who they find there yes it happens everywhere sure right um so that's one thing i think that we as south africans need to have a level of understanding that it's just a reality of the situation you said people must travel those yeah. are some of the things you yeah. learn from, from travel and, and it's everywhere mm. like it's not unique to south africa right and think about it no one wakes up from a comfortable surrounding to go struggle somewhere else and right? be threatened and, and have to get guns just, and things you know yeah. secondly statistically it's been shown that if you take away those people those roles and those people that are doing those menial jobs that we as South Africans or wherever in sure. the respective country don't want to do. It's not like they then automatically get filled by the locals there. Facts. Right. So what that does, whilst the intention is understandable as to why people think that way, mm -hmm. then the unintended consequence is that you're creating two problems. One, we are now removing people who are providing a service. Yes. Okay. Fact. And then you're not replacing it with people who are going to be doing that service. Yeah. So now you're creating a vacuum. Sure. Right. But then you're creating more unemployment mm. because now those same people, because you can't wish them away. Sure. They're still there just because they're now not trading. What, where do you think they're going to go? Yeah. Like practically. And I'm not, I'm taking away the emotion from it. Yeah. Like, let's just like look at it just logically. Sure. They're not going to disappear because now we've taken the means of um, generating income. Sure. What you then, in, in my mind, are creating an unintended consequence where those people then have to go elsewhere mm. to generate that income. Sure. So does that lead to other things? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, but I'm just saying, like I said earlier, often the problem is not the problem. Mm. It's the things around the problem that are the problem. So things like that, I think we need to look at it holistically, but it doesn't take away the good and the bad of it. Sure. So I accept this view, but I'm just saying... There are other views. Well, let's look at it holistically and then have a view. Sure. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Miles, I'm really hoping that you'll come back soon. Shit. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to chat about. I won't mention them now, but... Yeah. I'm really hoping that we can chat again soon, but thank you so much for visiting us. And thank you. And, and honestly, I really think these conversations do matter. It feels like you're just waxing lyrical and pontificating and, and stuff. But the fastest way to solve some of the big systemic problems, mm. at the very least, let's communicate. Yes. Um, we may not agree, sure, but at least, you know, when I have a point of view, you know what, where I come from and therefore what informs my view. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you so much. Sure, bro. Cheers. Thanks, man.